Hey guys, this is Rich from Pacific, and I'm back at you with another Ultima Online video. And today we're going to talk about a build that I've been using to play the high seas content. And I'm calling it my pirate build. So this is a, a, a hybrid melee archery build that I've put together specifically to do the high seas content in Ultima Online. Now, I avoided the high seas content for a long time when it first came out, um, but the more I started to play it, the more I really, really enjoy it. It is some of the best this game has to offer, actually, in my opinion. So, um, this build is really focused on being able to do um, all the farming for the high sea stuff that you want to do. It does include fishing. Um, and it also will allow you to combat some of the bosses in the high seas expansion. Um, so I'm going to go over that build. I'm not going to tell you how to train all of these skills. I will give you some uh, hints and tips. Uh, maybe I could do some follow-ups on how to train individual uh, fishing skills or, or other combat skills if you're interested. Um, I'm also going to tell you how to set up the new high seas combat ships and how to raid the the seas and and uh, win your fame and fortune through piracy all right so first off um, this is a 810 point build so this build does rely very heavily on items uh, very specific items that you will need i'm going to review those right now but first let's go over the end result so um, as you can see up here the end result is a hybrid, um, so we're going to have archery, uh, 120 when we're wielding a bow. Um, we're going to have tactics, 120. Chivalry locked at 80. We're going to have fishing at 120. Swordsmanship, we're going to have um, either 120 or 100 or 1. 20 or 115 in my case when we're wielding a swords weapon anatomy will be 100 healing 120 and bushido locked at 50 so uh, first let's talk about some of the standout ones so we this is what we would consider an abc archer anatomy bushido and chivalry tied with archery um, we want Bushido at least 50, and the reason why we do this is so that we can honor our targets. Um, 50 is the minimum skill required to honor, and that's all we really need it for. We're not going to really use any Bushido uh, abilities other than honor. Um, additionally, we want Chivalry locked at 80 because, like most of our melee characters that we've been going over, um, this is the minimum skill you'll need for... Uh, consecrate weapon to work 100% of the time plus it allows us to move around cast enemy of one and resurrect folks if we need to um, so you get all the benefits of a pretty decent paladin um, and then of course we have healing in anatomy um, this is going to be our primary healing skill is we're going to use bandages you can use enhanced bandages if you want, but with 120 healing skill, just regular old clean bandages will work just fine. So then we get into, we want both archery and swordsmanship. So I'm going to switch to the real skill here, and these are your real skills. You want 100 archery, 110 tactics, 80 chivalry, 120 fishing, 100 swordsmanship, 70 anatomy, 90 healing and 50 lock Bushido. Now you can get into this. You can swap out fishing if you don't plan on doing any of the fishing quests or want to fish up uh, Scalus or anything like that. Um, you can just stone off fishing and you can put something else more interesting here. I was actually thinking about trying uh, spell weaving for uh, some interesting effects. Um, you can also, I did this a little bit with necromancy, and you can use vampiric form. Um, you can essentially distribute these 120 points however you want. Um, resist spells comes to mind if you want to be more 
uh, spawning and general purpose on this but for me this is my fisherman I am a pirate on the seas I should be a legendary fisherman um, so you can see these are all our real skills modified we're up here at 110 points all right so to get uh, the 810 points for this were and to make our hybrid archer swordsman work we're really going to need some special items. So the first one that comes to mind is you're going to need the hunter's headdress. Um, this is a doom dropped artif artifact that gives you plus 20 archery, some decent decks and night sight plus hit chance increase. So uh, the resists are pretty abysmal on this, um, but um, what we'll do is work in some uh, other legendary gear to kind of offset the resist but really what we want this for is the hit chance increase and of course archery 20. Um, now, uh, the way this works is an enhanced client and I'm sure in a classic client too, you can do this as well where you can equip multiple items at the same time. So what I do is on my equip item hotbar, I'll have wherever I equip a bow, I make sure that I'm also equipping the hunter's headdress. This makes sure that whenever I'm armed with a bow, I have 120 archery. Um, if for some reason I forget, at least I am GM. So that's really it. Um, now the second item you will need for this will also be Captain John's hat. Um, so this is uh, this is the replica version. This is uh, obtained by killing Nira, the champion uh, spawn boss. It is a rare drop. Um, so you know. I would recommend trying to find these however you can if you have one set aside it works really well in this build because it's basically the same as the hunter's headdress except it's for swordsmanship so similarly whenever I arm a sword so I like to use a scimitar um, or a whip and whenever I arm those weapons I will use the uh, Captain John's hat so that I'm 120 swords well in my case I don't have the 120 swordsmanship scroll on this character yet so I'm 115 so you can see um, the idea is that while I'm on my ship or when I'm fighting something um, big and heavy I'm probably going to use my bow if I want to dispatch a bunch of enemies quickly I'm going to use my swords weapon um, now this this character is not a tank you're not going to go and tank solo tank every boss that's out there with this character um, you will be able to heal um, yourself and your allies pretty effectively with 120 healing and 100 nat. Um, and you should be able to keep up with any damage that's coming in from any of the high seas content. Uh, that being said, you know, we don't really have any um, overt defensive skills. We're not using any sort of parry. Uh, we don't have any resist. So this is really a damage focused build with the intent of just dispatching the high seas stuff uh, as quickly as possible and without a whole lot of stress. So the other skill item you will also need is was one I recommend. So you can do this a couple ways on this build. You can either go with, um, you can get the tactics talisman or the soldier, soldier's medal um, this will give you plus 10 tactics, plus it gives us 20% um, damage increase and 5% hit chance increase. These are all critical to our build. So you can go this way. You can get something similar and, and kind of swap the points around and go with um, 120 uh, real skill tactics. And then you can get the anatomy um, um, talisman and drop your anatomy down to 90. So that's another way you can distribute the skills. Um, so we have, you know, 30 points between our headdress, our, our, our head item, and our talisman. And then this also relies on custom rings. Um, these are completely crafted from scratch. Oh, excuse me. This one actually had swing speed increase on it and 35% damage increase. And then I imbued the rest. Um, but the key on this is going to be, of course, um, you do want anatomy and healing at 15, 
on both your jewelry set and this will get you up to 120 healing and 100 anatomy um, so that's how you can see um, my real skill I only have 70 anatomy and 90 healing and um, with those rings I can I can get my primary healing skill all the way up to where I want it to be now we also will have a few other healing options we do have Bushido we could use confidence and it will work most of the time um, and that'll give us a quick heal um, not much really at that level <clears throat> especially since we don't have any parrying this has a very limited value um, we are also um, we can also cast um, close wound with chivalry if we want to heal that way that is certainly a viable option and of course we could always use potions um, with a one-handed weapon or a balanced bow so we really have you know three or four healing options in here but healing and anatomy are going to be our main ones so you want to make sure you always carry bandages so that's the main build okay so some of the other items that are not critical to the build but what i've kind of done they they are to me to make kind of my character the best so the rest of the um artifact items i use um of note i i i am using gloves of feudal grip uh for the damage increase of 30 percent um this allows me to get a hundred percent damage increase on my on just my gear uh, without the bow so you can see i've got a hundred percent damage increase while i have nothing in my hands this uh, this makes it so that i can basically use any bow that i find or craft without having to put swing speed increase on it um i'm excuse, excuse me i mean damage increase um most of the legendary artifact bows that you'll find that come off the roof or whatnot a lot of them a lot of these items do not have damage increase um, so it's, it's very helpful to have a hundred percent damage increase on just your gear now it is a little difficult to get um, like you said i'm getting 20 percent from my talisman i'm getting 30 percent from my gloves no no these gloves are very um, they're not exactly easy to obtain but you can generally get and I think I'm getting 50% from my jewelry set um, there are many ways to get to 100% damage increase you um, I did pick a elven character so I could include woodland and you can see I'm actually getting 10% here out of my gorge um, that's not even necessary I can swap this out now um, but you can use woodland armor if you're using an elf um, you don't need to get hundred percent for this build to work you just need to make sure that you always have hundred percent damage increase when you have a weapon in hand at least so if you're using crafted bows um, um, I don't think I have any but a lot of times the crafted bows they'll by default come with 40 percent damage increase so um, so um, I'm also using, of course, uh, Ozzy's Obi for the stam increase and strength bonus. Um, I've got a quiver of infinity for um, a little bit of DCI. And I'm using a custom woodland gorge with stam, mana, lower mana cost, and damage increase. Um, plate mail arms that have stamina of 10 so you notice that what I'm trying to do like any any good archer dexter character you want to just stack your stamina um, you can see that as far as stats goes I have 150 dexterity um, I'm, I have more than I need so I could probably redo this gear um, I think some of that's because of the bow I'm wielding um, yeah so um, but you want at least 150 so you know 125 base with 25 in items you want to get as much damage as you can so you want your strength as close to 150 as you can get and then intelligence it's uh i think i've uh, it's locked at 10. so um very typical with a dexter character where i'm an elf i have a intelligence locked at 10 so i get at least that 20 20 mana and then I've got a bunch of mana increase items so I'm getting up to 62 mana which is great um, I have over 200 stamina which is excellent um, and 
I'm rocking right now 35% swing speed increase with this bow. So I'm, I think I'm swinging this bow as fast as I can. At the very least, I'm 1.5 seconds. So um, there you go. Uh, let's see. Now you can also see that I want to get 45% hit chance increase. That's uh, also pretty important. Not quite as important as it is with a like a sandpire, but you know it always helps to hit. Um, your leeches will kick in and, and all sorts of stuff. So we'll also be using a life leech on this somewhat. Um, so there's there's times when we want to use life leech and there's times when we don't. And um, certain bosses that do drain. Um, or give you, you know, damage reflection when you use life leech. You want to use, obviously, you don't want to use life leech, um, and that's one of the reasons why we're not using vampiric embrace on this character all the time. Instead, we're using anatomy in healing. So one, we can do more damage with anatomy, but two, um, we can actually effectively heal against um, Corgol and Scalus and um, whatever the other one is. Uh, Chari Beedris, or however you say it. Um, so they all uh, use some sort of magic that makes it, if you're a vampire and you fight them, it actually hurts you more than you're hurting them. So uh, that's why we're going with healing. Uh, let's see. I also, of course, have got Shanty's Waiters. And I'm using um, Hawkwind's Robe. Now, this is not really all that beneficial to me. But the reason why I wear it is because it's got a few properties that I like. Um, lower mana cost and mana regen. But more importantly, it covers up the ugly looking headdress. I really do not like the look of the hunter's headdress. Um, I do like the look of the hat. Um, but since I'm swapping back and forth um, a lot, I just the Hawkwind's robe just covers them both up. So it doesn't really matter. And I'm also got Corgol's Sash for a little bit of DCI and stamina increase. Um, now, you know, the gear that you get is obviously depending on what you have, but um, you want to shoot for over 180 stam and um, as much strength as you can get. So that's really um, the key to this, um, aside from the critical uh, skill items you will need. So the last thing on the gear here um, I want to go over is just the weapons that I like to use. So I like to find some of the best um, roof drop legendaries of, you know, cool weapon types that I like. I like the scimitar because for swords weapon because it's fast, single handed, um, and I had this good one um, that had you know, high life leech, high mana leech, high stamina leech, and hit fatigue. Um, but Scimitar does have double strike, which works really well. Um, paralyzing blow also, it's not so handy in this particular case, but it can be handy if you use this character in other scenarios. Um, so as far as bow, though, um, the main bow that you're going to probably want to craft on your own, um, this, is a, this is a critical one because... Most of the combat on the open seas that you will be facing will be against orc type uh, or repond or orcs in particular. So um, I built this bow a while ago and it's served me really well. I'm, I'm hitting very hard against a lot of the high seas, um, uh, you know, either the pirate ships or um, the pirate beacons. Um, you can take them out very quickly with an Orc Slayer. So um, this bow, uh, I had Hit Lightning. So Hit Lightning, Swing Speed Increase, and Hit Mana Leech in Orc Slayer. Um, that's what you want. So I made this by essentially, um, I think, let's see. Oh, I reforged this bow until I got... Um, certain amount in swing speed I think 40 swing speed and then um, I don't know if I ref enhance this one or not I probably could enhance this to get a little bit more um, 
but there's ways to get more than 30 percent on uh, swing speed increase on bows uh, I'm not going to really go into super detail about that but <clears throat> Basically, just get yourself a Hit Lightning Orc Slayer bow with the rest of the properties you want, and you'll do well on this. Um, I like the composite bows because they have um, um, Armor Ignore as the primary. So Armor Ignore is going to be your best friend here. Um, I also carry, so I mostly just all carry composite bows. Um, I do have an Elemental Slayer and a repawn slayer for um there was a spawn that was going on not too long ago as part of high seas content where you know it was both elemental and repawn enemies so i was using that um, and then i've got a really nice um, roof drop bow that i use uh, for general purpose so this one has hit mana drain and hit fatigue so if i'm fighting a boss um, that does not reflect the damage back i'm going to use this um, in fact, I might use this as well because it also has swing speed increase. This is a pretty good drop. Um, uh, lastly, um, this is kind of an interesting weapon, but I, I use the bladed whip of plundering that you can get from doing the high seas content. You can also craft these uh, bladed whips. Uh, this particular one, though, has hit explosion, which you know whatever um, it's not that great the reason why I carry it is it's my whirlwind weapon so um, when I'm fighting against Scalus they'll toss eels or so sometimes you're surrounded and so this does have whirlwind effect and it does actually proc the hit explosion quite often so it also has a pretty high hit mana leech so this is a good um, all-around whirlwind weapon um, you know, I do have some axes that I could use, typical what I would use like in a Sampire or melee build, but I like the whip because it's it's kind of a little bit of role play as well. All right, so let's talk about boats and a few quality of life things when it comes to doing farming of the high seas content. So before we get into any of that, I just want to point out that um, I use placed boats from multiple characters um, on the same character so with uo you can only have one boat in the water per character um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make your way to sea market so if you don't have a boat yet uh, a combat boat that can mount cannons you need to find your way to the sea market and the sea market is way out here in the ocean. It's basically due east of uh, Nubigencia docks. So what you want to do is log on to another character that's not your, um, your main pirate. Uh, so maybe like a mage or something. And then have them go to Nubigencia docks down here and just buy yourself a, the smallest um, not a rowboat but just a small ship that looks like this and place it in the water right here and then just sail east until you run into the sea market now once you're here in this area what you want to do when you place a boat you're given a key and the one exception to the control of these boats is that it's actually whoever has the key. Once it's placed in the water, anyone who has the key can control it and pilot it, um, at least with the classic boats. So what I do is I will use an alternate character to place a boat basically right on the outsides of the sea market, and I will name the key something like Floating Emporium, and then I'll give my main pirate character that key and make sure you insure it as well because keys to ships can be insured so that anytime i want to go to it i can go back and forth to um, you know my main combat boat but if i want to go to sea market all i have to do is use the key and just uh, go backwards until i um, run into or you know now the sea market won't allow you to keep boats parked here um, what will happen is after a certain amount of time, 
your boat will be teleported outside of the buoy area so you can see these buoys that are surrounding it um, your boat will randomly be put somewhere else so I just park it right outside here and you want to make sure that you come and refresh the boat every now and then so if you don't know what that means you just come in you recall and you at least open the cargo or move the boat a little bit and you'll see a message that says your boat has been refreshed uh, that keeps it from decaying because you don't want to be a bad citizen either you don't want to just leave a bunch of junk in the ocean but if you're actively playing this character having uh, these strategically placed boats uh, that are placed by other characters um, are is very very handy especially when you get into SOS's and some of the sailing around can take a long time in this game so having boats that you can just kind of quickly get to go and do your thing in that area and then leave them in the ocean um, is very handy so that's the first thing you want to do is get a boat for um, um, the uh, sea market now let's go back to sea market and okay so you can see what I'm doing here is I'm issuing commands to this boat um, so another thing I recommend is setting up it at very least like a little grid here now you can do these in other ways you can create um, macros for this I believe classic client already has these mapped to like the number key um, but I like to kind of have them right here and what I use is I use like sh left shift and then you know QWE ASD you know ZXC so I can if I want to go forward I hit shift if I want to go back I hit, uh, and it's, it allows me to kind of like easily issue commands um, and then I, of course, have one for stop as well. Um, there's some other, um, there's a couple other commands that you're going to want, and that's mainly the tracking and stop tracking, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. But I recommend having the basic boat commands, you know, get used to it. So another thing that you're going to want to have handy is, uh, well, there's two. So one of them is the option to toggle foliage. And this is something I just learned not too long ago, but uh, foliage also counts for sails on boats. So notice when I turn foliage off, I no longer see the annoying sail. Well, I see a little bit of it, um, but that's more of a glitch. Um, this is super handy because honestly, the sails and the boats in this game, kind of they don't look very good. So um, I usually just turn them off. And the other one is you want the ability to toggle always run on or off um, easily because when you're dealing with these little boats um, you actually have to walk off a plank so I'll show you you kind of have to get close to shore and then um, you can um, open the clank and then it teleports you off the boat um, so you go to sea market and the sea market will have two shipwrights one of them is a gargoyle and the other one I think is a human so the gargoyle has um, the gargoyle ship deed, which is 200,000 gold. And that's a very large ship. Um, and I'm not going to show you all the ship types. You can certainly look at them at, on UO Guide, but these are either of these will do fine for your very first ship. They'll at least do until you get yourself an orc ship, which is what you're going to want. And I'll be showing you the rest of this video on my orc ship. But I just want to show you where you can buy your first ship. Um, and Peyton offers the Tokeno ship deeds. Now, the Tokeno ship deeds are great, especially if you're a, um, a fisherman. Because they actually do offer a slight, I think they add 10 points to your fishing skill uh, whenever you're fishing from one. So... It's kind of handy if you're um, like doing fishing competition or something like that, or, or you know you need a high fishing skill. Um, they have the least amount of cannon spots, uh, but for the technique I'm going to show you, you only really need three cannon um, to really run any of this content. So all the other cannon spots are really just you know if you decide to bring around along somebody else on your adventures, they can fire cannons too. 
you can't really work more than three cannon at the same time. So that's all you really need. Um, so that's where you can buy these. Um, so I'm just going to move my um, my ship out of here. Oh, also, uh, while I'm here, this is also where you can get um, boat paint. I believe this is the only place you can get boat paint. And you also want to keep this area because there's one person here, the alchemist here, actually sells saltpeter. Now, I don't know if they sell saltpeter anywhere else, but um, in order to craft some of the cannon items to get started, you may need some saltpeter. So just remember that here. Um, I don't know if you can buy it any other vendor. I know you can mine it, and that's how it used to be obtained. But this is the fastest way to get it. It does cost quite a bit per. Um, you don't need all 500. You just need, so to let you know, when it comes to cannon, which we'll talk about here in a bit, you just need enough to get started because you'll be um, pirating lots of the cannon materials once you, so you only really need about maybe 40 or 50 total uh, shots to get started in this. So let me go ahead and um, move my boat back out to the safe zone, and then I'll show you the orc boat. All right, so the the main boat you're going to want for pirating um, is going to be an orc boat. Uh, now, the only way you can really obtain one of these is you can, you can buy one from another player. That's one option. Um, or you can start with either a Tokeno boat or um, the Gargoyle boat and hunt enough pirates to get the parts the plans to make one orc boat. So um, I'll show you some of that here, uh, how to gather some of that, but it does take a little bit. So if you have a buddy that can start you out or you can find one in the vendor, it's probably worth the gold if you have it. Um, if you don't have it, don't worry. You can um, start with a $200,000 uh, boat and then get a few cannon on it and a few shots and you can start your career as a pirate. Uh, but ultimately, to be um, a swarthy bastard on the high seas, you're going to want um, an orc boat. They do the most damage. Their cannons do. Um, so this is mine. You can see that it's um, dyed black. It's getting a little shoddy. You can see the paint's kind of wearing here. So what I actually did is had some um, um, boat paint, and um, what you do is you target... Um, the mast, I think, here, let me turn on my foliage, target the mast, and it says you've reached the maximum color capacity, all right, so I'm as black, as dark as this is going to get, um, maybe it's a little light on my screen, um, one thing that they don't tell you is that you can see that the boat paint color, how did I get it so dark, well, what you do is you keep dyeing it the same color over and over and it will get darker um, up to a certain point. Um, you can also use boat paint remover um, to completely strip it back to its natural form. Okay, so um, what you're going to want to do when you get your first combat boat is basically you want to set up the, the front three cannons. Um, now, I've played with it, like, there are a couple different ways, and really this is the best view, the best opportunity for you to have all three cannons. Um, so there's a few things that I'm going to show you um, that will make your life a little easier. And that's actually using um, enhanced client macros with um, the store default object and the use default object um, actions. So what I like to do is I'll set... Um, five items that say store default object one through five. Um, so what I will do is first I'll set five to be my tiller. Now in my macros, I have, now what that's done is that is set it so that default object five is the tiller of this boat. Now I have a macro um, that targets the default object and then uses targeted objects. So this is a very 
you know you repeat this macro for each one of these but I have it so that the the letter B will target my tiller and use it so essentially as long as I'm on this boat I can just hit B and I can take control of the boat move it around with the mouse um, and it's moving and if I hit P again I'm no longer so it's very quick I don't have to find and double click the tiller you want to set this up on your main combat boat because you will be swapping back and forth between uh, manual control like this or moving around on your boat trying to get back and forth um, so what I'm also going to do is store default objects for my cannon so I'm going to store the, the um, what is this the the bow cannon as um, number one and I'm going to store the port cannon uh, sometimes it's hard to target these because um, it's because the um, even though the mast isn't showing up it's not allowing you to click through it so let me actually move the boat here okay and we'll put starboard over here and we'll put ports over here so what I want to do is store default object 2 as the port cannon and store default object 3 as the starboard cannon okay now I know that seems like a lot of setup but um, so now you notice how like I've double clicked on all of them and I've kind of aligned them like this where um, you know port is left <laughs> starboard is right and bow is forward and that helps me remember I'm not exactly a, um, a real-life uh, sailor so these things are a little tough for me to remember but what I like to do is kind of line them up there and they will stay there as you move around now you notice that since I did that and I close them all now say I walk up here I have a macro for my number pads to basically use so target default one use select a target target default to so you select a target so these are on my number keys so when I'm up here I just hit one two three and it basically pulls up my cannon um, status gumps work you know um, easy so I can do this while I'm in combat while I'm sailing around I can just you know hit hit one two or three and it'll pull up those cannon it'll also pull up um, the inventory until I move so you can see it pulls up the container now notice that I'm hitting all three cannons right now and it's because I'm standing basically perfectly right here equally between all three cannons um, so getting that set up is it takes a little bit of practice um, but once you get it so that you can sail around and you have access to all three cannons up here you can actually load and fire all three cannons at the same time I mean it's as quick as you can click them um, so the, they're not tied together on a timer you can load all three cannons at the same time um, and you stand here and you basically don't have to move and now you combine that with armed with a bow and in combat mode basically I'm just sailing around um, and I use always attack so I can um, you know I can sail and attack uh, with the bow and I can fire my cannon and I can load the bow or I can load the cannon while I'm sailing and firing my bow at the same time so it's a uh, it's a very good setup to have um, another thing that is super helpful while you're sailing is to remember that you can zoom out um, especially on these boats um, you know sometimes you want to see a few tiles away from you so it's very useful now you can see I'm approaching another boat here with orcs now, I can't quite see all that's aboard right now but I just see that it's, it's a scout you can see I'm just going to sail around target them and fight them and I can also heal at the same time so this build we can heal combat and shoot our cannons all at the same time um, or at least without any delay between them now see I've killed the rest of them and we're getting a little bit into combat but just to show you how this works, basically what I'm gonna want to do is just stay in mandal drive mode and keep 
keep pushing myself up, you know, and then give myself, and I'm going to fire starboard. And then as soon as I fire, I'm going to prep. Now you can see it says I'm starting. So while I'm prepping, I'm, I can move the boat around and fire the other cannon. And as soon as I fire, I prep. And then I'm going to turn around, and I can fire again. And I prep. Now say both of those cannons are, are prepping. I could actually adjust the boat. And, well, I'm already in the scenario where I can fire my port. So I'm basically going to do this until I completely scuttle the boat. Now sometimes what happened is this boat stopped because I I killed all those participants and then I fired once at it and then it stops going. Um, so you can see the, the boat's pretty damaged. Let's go ahead and we'll get out of manual drive mode and we'll see if we can board their cannon. Okay, so you can see um, we don't have permission to board yet so because we haven't quite scuttled it. So it looks scuttled, but it's not. So what I want to do is basically go ahead and go back into manual drive mode. I'm going to keep firing my cannons. Remember, starboard, starboard is to your right. Um, port is to the left. And we can just basically do that uh, until it allows us to board. Now, it should go one more damage state. And you can see I'm doing 6,500 per hit. There we go. So now what I like to do is just, um, I'll go out and I just like to finish making sure that my, my cannons are charged. Um, oh, also to remind you, you need to carry a torch and a ramrod in order for the loading, but they do not have to be in your main pack, so they can be on any pack that's on you, uh, but you do have to carry those. They are insurable. So now that I've um, scuttled this enemy ship, I'm going to go ahead and double click on them and I can board them. Now, the thing with the enemy ships are, um, this is just an orc um, combat ship. They're not going to have a whole lot of good stuff. Um, they're mostly going to have wood and iron, um, plain boards and iron. Um, so, but they will also have these cargo, maritime trade cargo. So you want to make sure you go ahead and grab all of these. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually grab all this wood. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to not. I don't need to do that right now. So you also want to make sure you go to the cargo hold, and this is where you see you're going to be able to loot the cannon items. So I was able to loot. Each ship will have at least some of these. In most cases, they will have more than you spend to or use to bring down the ship. Um, so this case, uh, pretty close. I mean, 13 powder charges, but you know, I got 20 those and 20 fuse cord so I didn't shoot 20 shots to bring that ship down maybe close but if you if you keep doing this you'll see um, you will end up making more finding more of these items than you spend um, also some interesting that's where I got a white dot cloth dot, and then I'll get all these cargos and also the cargo holes are where you can find refinements so you can see I've actually got Several of hardening, which are pretty good. I'm going to grab all of them. And if you want, you can go ahead and loot the crew. And, you know, I like to pick up arrows from them, maybe bandages. Um, maybe I'll eat their food. Um, so, um, one of the things I want to show you here is um, there's going to be a lot of looting of these ships in the high seas. So it is absolutely critical that you set up your um, user agents to work for you, not against you. So what I mean by that is, um, so your cargo is a container and you notice that it carries 1400 stones, which is great. Um, this allows you to stay on the seas, you can collect stuff, you can store it in here like your bank. 
Also, like your bank, it does allow you to use commodity deeds. So you always want to bring some, com if you're going to go out on a pirate session, um, I don't like to leave my boat in the water. So I always, whenever I'm going to be done for the day, I need to plan on emptying that cargo hold. So that's why I always bring commodity deeds just to make my life easier. Uh, boards and ingots and the stuff you're going to collect, they do weigh quite a bit. And that's why you can see the, this, um, the orc ship holds 14,000 uh, 14, stones, which is quite a lot. Um, but it does add up. So one of the things you want to do um, is also set up your um, organizer agent. So what you can do is you create a new organizer. So you hit hit escape and you go into agent settings. Similar to our um, scavenger agent, now we're going to use an organizer. Now organizers are an enhanced client. They are this little box right here over every pack. So every open container will have an option for you to use an organizer on it. Um, so what I did is I create one called Pirate Hold. And basically what I do is anytime I find any gear or any loot that I want to regularly grab from these ships, I will add it into this. And then I want to I start the day, I will set my default container to be the car my cargo hold. And then once I loot the items, I walk up to it and I hit pirate hold. And it will put anything that I've deemed pirate loot in my cargo hold. So this makes it really quick for me to go over here and say I wanted to grab those boards. I just grab the boards. Uh, in case you're wondering, I'm using drop into container bound to a Z key. So what I do is I pick up the boards and hit Z and it drops it into my backpack. So it says, oh, you can't carry any more weight. Okay, that's fine. So notice what I do is I go back and I just run up to it and I hit pirate hold and it automatically will put those boards in there. And that's because I added those boards into that organizer agent. So experiment with that a little bit, but um, especially when you get, you know, every type of ingot, every type of board, every type of leather, it's a lot of different commodities that you're collecting. Um, and it's good stuff. You want to gather it, but it's really, um, you want to make it quick to loot and get things into your hold. Um, you also want to carry commodity deeds so that when these things add up to a lot of weight, you can just, you know, use the commodity deed to create and then that's a one stone you can easily move it off your boat so also on the uh, organizer agents um, now you know in order to raise fishing you're gonna have to do a lot of fishing so I'm not going to bore you guys with a tutorial on fishing um, it's pretty straightforward you get a fishing pole and you fish um, but you know to get the 120 scrolls, you have to gather a lot of different types of fish, etc. So you're going to want to spend a lot of time fishing. Um, but the organizer agents can actually um, save your, they can make, save your sanity in the same way. So what you do is you add the fish by type. And by type, it's usually this color and direction. So even if they're different names, as long as they're going in the same direction and they're the same color, then one type will cover it. Um, so the best way to do it is just every time you catch fish, you try to add it, um, and then you create another organizer, say fish into cargo, and do the same thing. You you set your cargo hold to be the default container, and then when you get full of fish, you run up, and if you didn't know, you can right mouse button click on the little box inside each container and change the organizer that's going to use on that box. So you can change it to fish cargo and then run up and hit fish and it'll deposit fish. You can also use this to deposit fish at your house. So I've got a big uh, chest with probably 400,000 stones filled with um, hundreds and thousands of fish. Um, and I don't move those manually. What I do is uh, I just catch them and I set up an organizer to dump it into a box. Um, so um, that's pretty much it for the organizers. I mean, they're, they're super handy. With this, um, they can also be used with the SOSs. You can use them to toss items, um, all sorts of things. Um, 
So you notice that we grabbed a bunch of these um, cargo. So after I loot a ship um, and I put all the critical uh, commodities in my cargo hold for now, um, what I also want to do is make sure that I have a rune for Buccaneer's Den. And there is a particular spot that I recommend is just marking a room right here next to the bank. And next to the bank, you're going to find um, the Maritime Black Market Merchant. Uh, on my shard, his name is Owen. I don't know if he's Owen everywhere or if he changes every day. Uh, but he's got, a, he's got a, uh, a parrot on his shoulder. And he gives you the option to either sell or buy Maritime Cargo or sell maritime cargo in exchange for pirate loot. Now, as I said before, Publish 110 is coming out, so they're adding some new items into the pirate loot, but he um, deals with what they call doubloons. So you can sell these for a certain amount of doubloons. Um, the various types or quality are worth more. So legendary are worth, you know, a thousand or fifty. 2000 whatever it is exalted exalted so basically you know you just want to collect these now the the items you can get on the block market um, I won't go through each one but there's some decorative stuff you can get the cannons some of the cannons types um, these are good cannons to get um, you know some deco items um, there's a cool shoulder parrot which is neat to have um, some titles some deco and you can also get the blundering webs. But the most important thing right now, this is how you are getting tritons. So um, for all you tamers out there, this is um, a great way to get tritons if you haven't been doing this already. Um, you get a statuette, which then you can just, as long as you're the right taming level, will turn into a bonded triton. Um, so it's very handy. Um, and it comes with the bladed whips. Now, they are going to be adding some new items in here, so uh, I'll report in afterwards. Um, I've managed to save up 367,000 doubloons, so hopefully I'll have enough for my Pirate Lord title as soon as it comes out. Uh, but this is a good rune to have. Um, now, it also is nice because it's right next to a trash can. Um, now, one of the things I find that this character does really well is collect not only the pirate um, doubloons but also um, clean up Britannia turning points. So I noticed how I looted all of those um, re um, refinements. Now some of these are actually pretty nice like the hardening uh, uh, but these are of armor types that I probably won't use so I'm just going to use this as an example. I'll throw these away and I got 150 turner points. And the thing is, is that it really does add up. Um, you start throwing away or tossing the semi-rare items that you get in this. And um, you know, if I decide I want to collect turn-in points and I hunt pirate ships or other merchant ships for it, um, I can get up to 10 to 15,000 turn-in points per ship. Um, and it goes pretty quick. So uh, I'm also going to toss these bone paints because they weigh 10 stones. I don't need any. Okay. So that's that's Buccaneer's Den. Um, now, a few other locations that you might want to keep. I like to have the fishmonger locations marked. So in several towns near the docks, you'll find a guy that is called the fishmonger what he will do is if your boat is nearby and you double click on him he will give you a quest to um, collect a certain type of fish or a certain amount of fish and you can do that to uh, collect high seas prizes um, he'll mostly give out bait fishing bait and other things but he the, if it's a high enough value this is how you're going to get your 105 110 115 and 120 fishing scrolls is by doing the fishmonger quests. Um, I highly recommend looking up in U UO Guide or on the Wikipedia page um, or wiki page uh, for the fishmonger quests. It goes into detail about 
the types of fish and, and where you can get them from. But I like to have all of them marked. Um, I also will have the Zento Pirate Quest um, location marked because um, there this is a good place to actually hunt pirates because you don't have to go back and forth, sail around. Um, basically, you can just park your boat here in uh, the Zento Ocean. Um, it's also fairly safe, and you'll usually find a lot of boats outside of the um, the, the the buoy area. So um, that's pretty much it on those. Let me go back to my ship. Oh, so notice that I have a rune for my ship, and it's insured. Um, this is just quality of life, because like I said, I will move back and forth to multiple ships. Um, you can see, like here, I actually have a, a Brit ship parked in the ocean. Um, and this is also where I do my pirate binding. Um, so when I do this, um, I set up uh, multiple ships on different characters. And then I make sure that um, if it's a multiple, if I am using multiple accounts, I make sure that I... Um, add my characters on other accounts as captains so that I can manipulate the ship on a second account or I can just have them in the ocean and they work for all right so one more thing about um, boat configuration here is that notice how I I kind of recalled in and away from this boat. I left this across server line several times. So what happened is that my cannon displays walked away. So that's why if I hit one, two, and three, it'll pull them back right back up where they were. Um, so that's that's why we do that before. Um, now I did mention that there was one other command, and you might wonder like, well, how do I find these pirates? Well, okay, so I'm going to give away. Um, this isn't exactly a secret, but it's it's kind of my hunting area. What I like to do is I go to the Jollum Moom Gate and basically or Jollum and basically everything east of Jollum between uh, Hall and this sea right here. So basically the East Jollum Sea um, is basically crawling with pirates and merchants and pirate beacons. So the other area is uh, we talked about Zento. Um, and I'll show you that one. If we go to Zento, um, it is, it's basically all in this area. So basic, just east of Zento along the southern, uh, um, south of the moon gate. And actually sometimes even up and around this horn, you can find, um, pirates and beacons and merchants. I found it's not quite as much as um, the East Jolom Sea, so that's where I like to stick. Um, and it's still a pretty big ocean, so fortunately they put a really neat feature in there called tracking. And I'm not quite sure I understand all of it, but what I do is I set up a key to say T for start tracking and then Shift T to stop tracking. And what I'll do is I'll zoom out and I'll start tracking. And if there's something that's nearby, and I think it's like uh, 160, or I don't know, it's a, it's a lot of tiles. Um, it'll see how it gives me an arrow and it'll kind of point me in that direction. Now, if I say stop tracking, they'll go away. So I want to keep tracking on and you can just follow the arrow and I'll even show you dots on the map, but they're not exactly precise. It's just giving you the direction. Um, so we just follow it, and it will kind of turn if you see it turn. And sometimes it does weird stuff, and you could say we should run into some sort of other vessel on the seas. Now that can be a beacon, it can be another ship, player owned ship will also show up here. In this particular case, it is another orc scout ship, uh, which I'm not going to bother bringing down right now. So that allows me to just kind of sail off in this direction towards the other arrow. 
and hopefully run into something a little more valuable. So in this particular case, it's actually a dread pirate, um, another dread pirate. So we're going to bring these guys down. All right, so this is our first uh, dread pirate. Now, what I'm going to show you here is I've got, you see here, I've got a pirate binding rope. Now, you get this by accepting the quest from um, either the guy at the Zento docks or the guy there's uh, or the guy on the um, at the sea market but I'm going to use a trick where my actual this character's boat is on the same server that we're on right now but it's it's up closer to um, I put it somewhere else on this server so I'm going to kind of show you binding this pirate and it may not work the same way with you because you'll probably end up having to sail back. Um, and maybe I'll do another video on how to optimize pirate fighting. But um, this is how we're going to bring it down. Basically, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to bring up our cannons and we're going to make sure we're in combat mode with our bow and we're going to be taking out the orcs. Don't bother fighting... Um, the pirate yet so if you you know you don't want to target the pirate because we actually want him at a hundred percent health um, before we start to fight him so we'll go ahead and we'll just kind of load and fire our cannons make sure that you heal notice that I am taking damage but um, you know 120 healing will we'll, heal 50 60 hit points pretty straight pretty easy and I want to try to get these these other orcs dead as soon as possible So now I'm going to go ahead and arm my sword because I don't really want to fire at the pirate. I just want to s stop him. Now, what's kind of nice about this is that he, the when the ship stops, he'll be scuttled. You'll be able to join. So I want to change over here, fire port cannons, load them, I'll fire bow cannon, and he's scuttled. All right. So now. Um, before I get into looting, what I'm going to do is he's, he's just going to, you know, shoot arrows at me. He's mostly harmless. And I'm going to get out of manual drive mode and I'm going to fix my zoom. And what I'm going to do is honor him. Oh, so I have to actually board it. So I want to make sure that I get the honor. So I started honorable combat. Now I'm going to go ahead and cast enemy one, and I'm going to just kick his butt. And I'm going to use Onslaught with my scimitar, and I'm just going to beat on him. It takes a little bit. So you see, this is why we're switch. We have swords because it really brings down the pirate a lot faster than just the bow. And we're closing in on 200 hit points every second and a half, second and a quarter. Okay, so once he gets down to, um, 
like 12% to 8%, then what we're going to do is we're going to start using the binding rope on him. Bonnie knows Greg the Dread Pirate. All right. It says... Okay, so in this case, I killed the pirate because my ship wasn't in the area, my main ship that has the binding pole, so um, I wasn't able to capture him. But by killing him, you get a death certificate, and you can turn this into the quest giver, and they give you, you know, some gold, and um, I don't know, he might give you some other items for it. Um, now, to get the parts for the orc ship you'll need to be able to bind him and that means that your ship has to be in the area so it's either the one you uh you sailed up to him on and you captured him and he would go over to the other ship or your ship has to be on the same server that you're on when you try to bind him um, that wasn't the case for me in this one but you get the idea so i'm going to go ahead and loot his cargo hold here and again take all of his cannon stuff and you can see oh carronade so that's a different cannon if i wanted to use that as you can see the more you do this the more you'll be able to build up your ship arm your ship repair your ship um, it really is a self-sustaining activity in uo and so i think they really did this right when they implemented boats um, i haven't really seen another game do boats um, um, you know quite as well um, at least not for like MMO vehicles it's pretty good so there's nothing really good there so usually the dread pirates don't have good loot um, I will take iron in boards though because they will allow me to repair my ship if I get too damaged and the more you use your cannon cannons the more they will get damaged there's no um, so you always want to bring, um, you know, grab the regular iron so that you can repair your cannons. And I run up here and I hit pirate hold. And it should dump all of that stuff in there. And I just go back and loot again. Hit pirate hold. All right, so that's Dread Pirates. Okay, so I found another Dread Pirate and I was able to put my um, main boat with my pirate binding pole near close enough to, to be able to capture him. So you can see that he's bound up uh, on this pole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna um, sail across the server line so that I'm on the same server line as the quest giver for this. And in my particular case, it's here by the sea market. And instead of selling all the way to the sea market, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recall to I'm gonna leave the pirate right where he's at. And I'm going to recall to my little skiff. And I'm going to sail backwards. And there is the quest giver, Clay the Officer. And if I double click on him, he will c complete the quest. And that's great. And then what he gave me was, what did he give me? Uh, me Jack Diddley, 10K. Oh, no, he gave me part of an orc ship, okay. So as you see, I got part six out of eight. So you need to collect each part. And what you can do is combine them together. And once they're combined together, you get the deed for an orc ship. Now, while I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on them again and accept the quest and get another pirate binding pole. And I'm going to 
go forward. Now notice how it didn't show up on the boat that I'm at. It shows up, it's bound to the boat that my character has placed in the water. So what I've done is my main pirate, I actually place a boat here where I cross back and forth across the server line. This is going to have the one where my pirate pole is on. Um, and I'm going to keep it right here, you can see. And then the main boat that I'm going to use for fighting is placed by another character, and I just happen to be captain of it. So it allows me, I'm using three boats here to kind of farm pirates, and you can do it a little easier than that with um, the Zento location, because if you, the Zento location, a lot of times you can find pirates in the same server line as the quest giver himself. So you don't even have to do that. You just recall back to the quest giver and collect your reward and, and start the quest over again. Um, but when you're fishing in or fishing for pirates in the Jolum Sea, you kind of have to use this um, multi-boat cross-server thing. All right, so a lot of what we're doing also as a pirate is, see, I've used tracking here to track down this merchant ship. Now, the merchant ship, you'll still, they'll either be humans or gargoyles, but um, in either case, are they um, aggressive monsters. Now, what's interesting about this is that they're blue. Um, you can shoot them, and I do believe you, or you can kill them, and you do lose karma. But you don't actually have to. You, All you have to do is just scuttle their ship. And um, you can start collecting their loot. You can just board them and collect their loot. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that I've noticed that there's definitely a um, um, distinctive aspect to what type of chest you see on their deck based for what type of loot they have. So these are like wooden crates and small boxes. These are probably gonna be like food or lower end resources. These are the medium fancy boxes. They're kind of probably like mid range, probably have like shadow ore and maybe copper and that sort of stuff. It's really the fancy elven boxes you wanna find. Those will have like Valorite, and v and Frostwood and Bloodwood. Um, so I'm not gonna bother wasting the canning on these guys. I'm gonna find another, um, um, a little bit richer merchant ship. Um, if I don't find any soon, then I might come back and kill these guys or get rid of a scuttle it so that that cycles um, and, and spawns a new one. So that's one thing is that once you scuttle a ship, um, it will go away and a new one will, will spawn in the area all right so through tracking i found an, another merchant ship and this has as i was saying before has three real the, the bright white um fancy um chests so i'm gonna go ahead and scuttle these guys and i'll show you what kind of loot they have all right so you can see um I scuttled these guys, they stopped moving, and they're all just uh, blues, they're not They're not going to attack me. So let's see what's in, uh, let's check their cargo first. Um, of course I get the typical cannon stuff, another cannon, and some refinements. Now you always want to check the refinements because sometimes you will find the invulnerability ones, so it, it's a good spot for those. Um, all right, so let's check the first. Oh, and sure enough, there we go. Let's check the second. So you can see we got lots of V-Rite, Agapite, Valorite, Frostwood, Bloodwood, and of course Barb Leather. Um, in all three chests. So it's these kinds of, this. these chests generally have the best loot. Um, I, I'm noticing that it is, depending on the, te the, the graphical type of chest, will tell you, give you a good idea what kind of stuff is in it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, loot all of this. And 
and I'm only really able to do, I can't do it all, so I'm going to go ahead and go up here and use my organizer agent. Back. Oops. I accidentally killed one of them. There we go. My bad. I lost a lot of karma. Whole lot of V ride in this load. another merchant sailing by we'll see what they got here when I'm done looting these guys it's uh, always a fun day on the treacherous open seas for these poor merchants you'd think they'd uh, catch on by now oh, too much stuff alright done here all right and then I'll just leave these guys be so that's a rich merchant all right and so the last type of main encounter you will run into um, is um, the coveted pirate beacons now the reason why these are so good is because if you're trying to collect the blooms um, you get um, everyone who participates in the destruction of a pirate beacon through firing the cannon at it at the end uh, will get a 10,000 doubloon um, um, trade cargo. So you can maximize that by kind of getting your whole party of folks in or pulling multiple characters, whatever, and everyone take a shot at the, at the beacon and everyone will get a um, mythic... Um, maritime cargo which is worth uh, 10,000 turn-in points so um, you know you can optimize this you can get um, I believe 80,000 per up to six or eight people can get the drop so um, I'm going to show you how to approach beacons on your own and remember what we're going to do is we're going to have Now you, you want to keep an eye out here because if you see numbers start to appear on your boat, that means they're firing cannons at you. Uh, your, your, your ship will take a bunch of damage, but it's really a pain in the butt. So you want to try to not get damaged if you can. You don't. So coming in at this angle will um, stop them from. Um, it's less likely they're going to fire their cannons at you. So notice I killed these two on this side. What I'm going to do is actually back up and approach the other side at the same angle. I'm going to clear out one side at a time. So the two orc folks on either side. All right. Now notice my bow is destroying them, but you do want to keep healed. Now, these pirate beacons will also spawn like deep sea serpents and krakens. Um, they don't drop what 
those items normally do, but you you can get maritime cargo for killing them. So um, a lot of times it's worth, you know, you don't want to sit here and farm them, but it is worth killing them. You can get cargo drops from killing them. And they will spawn uh, indefinitely as long as the pirate beacon is up. All right, so you want to target the orcs. Try to bring them down. So, see, I'm not even, I'm just letting it, letting it shoot, and with this bow, um, I'm getting, sometimes hitting for over 200 in one hit, so, it's really nice setup for doing the beacons, plus the areas, is, is hitting them quite hard actually these guys do have quite a bit of hit points so um, where is cracking yeah, I'm gonna zoom back in here and let's target the last orc Now you'll notice what will happen as soon as all of the orcs defenders are done, the the beacon will destroy like that. Now once that's happened, you have to come in from either the top, uh, the east or the west. You gotta kind of slide right into this, and then you uh, you want to arm your sword probably, and you can fire your cannon at it. Now you can attack the beacon with your bow and spells and other things, um, but um, it just, they have so many hit points and what it does, it does reflect some of the damage back to you. So it's just easier to just, um, just take the time to charge and fire your bow cannon. And with the orc ship, it takes, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 shots or so. Um, to take down. No, there is no direct loot on these. Um, it's just the mythic cargo that you're going for. Um, so you really want to, before you destroy the lighthouse, make sure that everyone, at least one, everyone has taken at least one shot with the cannon. So to get the maximum amount of cargo. Now, of course, I'm only just playing with one character, so I'm going to go ahead and just see this through. All right, so almost done here. Need one more shot. Come on. All right, now I always remember to always just prep because um, now you'll see I got a mythical quality maritime cargo. Um, so, you know, this is good. Um, uh, I, you can turn it into Minoc for loyalty points to, so each of these you could turn in to the cities and get loyalty to those towns, but the best use is just to sell it to the, to the black market vendor. So that was a pirate beacon. All right. So after... A little while of sailing the seas a little bit we fought a beacon we fought a couple merchants and a couple pirates um and then i pulled back in the docks i'm going to call it a day so you know we ended up with 900 v right 350 valorite um 750 agapite 350 bloodwood 300 frostwood all in all i think that's a pretty good haul plus um 100 cannonballs almost 100 partner charges and over 100 uh, fuses. So I know we did pretty good across the board there. Um, grape shot really isn't used a lot. We didn't really talk about much about the cannons. One thing about the style, it doesn't really matter what the style of cannon is. They're really just aesthetics. Um, all cannons do the same amount of damage. 
um, it really depends. The only difference is, is that any cannon in an orc ship will do more damage. So they could be carronades, they can be these big cannons like this. I have the pumpkin cannons from the, um, the event that was going on. I think that you can't get these anymore. Um, but it really, um, and as far as the type, I only really use the cannonball, the grape shot. Um, they're interesting. They will destroy other player cannons easy and they I think they do decent damage over time to some of the pirate stuff but I just use the cannonballs the general plain cannonballs to take down the ships I'm gonna go ahead and commoditize all of these items uh, but first what I want to do is take the iron ingots that we got in our adventure and I want you to notice that since we've been using them these cannons say that they're moderately damaged. So if you're, you don't have to be at docks, you can be close to the shore, but you have to be close to shore to do this. And what you do is you can repair weapon and you can see it used 200 ingots. Now, no, it's pristine. Now, if I repair the other one, it's gonna use 100 ingots pristine. Hopefully this one is not Eh, well, we didn't get it quite pristine, but we did. We used all of our ingots. So that's why it's important to take those iron ingots while you're looting because it'll just save you a trip to, to, to home to get more. So now my cannons are fully repaired. And I'm going to go ahead and commoditize my items here and dry dock my ship to go home. So like I said, I don't like to leave my ship in the water, especially if I'm hunting in fell because <clears throat> other people can... If you're in fell, other people can attack and scuttle your ship. If you leave stuff in the cargo, they can steal it. Um, they can take all your cannonballs and all your fuses. And it's happened to me several times, so I try not to leave my ship in the water, even though it's convenient. So, um, anyway, I hope this was a helpful video to you guys getting started with high seas or pirate, or you're just curious about my high seas piracy antics um i plan on doing some more high seas content videos soon i'll go over some of the bosses and some of the other fishing related um, quests that you can do uh, there's lots of stuff in high seas but this is really kind of the core um you know sailing around working on your ship fishing to some degree um fighting dread pirates, fighting pirate beacons, and robbing merchants blind. Anyway, guys, um, thanks for listening, and talk to you soon. Bye.